What do you need a platform for? The platform is your central communication tool. With it, you handle all the tasks that go along with holding a MOOC. Its most basic function is to make you and your course visible and findable. You know, the Internet is a pretty large place. Using search engines, one should be able to find you and get some information about what you are offering. These information should enable potential participants to estimate if your course is right for them. So by giving people who are interested in the same topic a chance to find you, you are finding your audience. Besides describing the topic of the course, a more or less outline of the structure gives an impression of what you are up to and what amount of work is needed along the way. These are just a few aspects of the wide variety of interactions a platform can provide. At the very beginning of each participant's way through your material is the registration. By giving a name and choosing a password, each individual constructs a virtual entrance door. Behind this door lies a close community of people who have chosen to join you and to focus on your topic. This membership enables different ways of communication. If everything works out well, this toolbox of interactions will lead an anonymous crowd towards becoming a functioning community. A basic service function of the platform is to keep track of all the activities. It stores the state or the achievements of each participant and thereby provides orientation in the course. People who return to the course can instantly see which units they already covered, which videos they saw and which quizzes they solved. This provides convenience in a highly individual learning environment. The main difference between MOOCs and traditional learning software is that interaction can be a major part of the experience. The already mentioned quizzes are often done in a formative way. This means that the quiz is not for getting a grade, but for getting feedback on where to improve. The consumption of the learning material can be interrupted for being able to realize how effective the own efforts have been so far. Another form of activity are assignments. At the end of a course you probably want to do a summative test. This is a classical type of test, checking what you know and what you don't know. This kind of test is especially necessary if you are going to hand out a certificate for a certain qualification. The center of the MOOC's social site is the forum, the place where students and lecturers can interact. But this is not the only part where people get together. Group works, meaning tasks that are made for two or more people, encourage participants to join forces and interact. These interactions are of course managed by the platform. Considering the huge number of people who can join, MOOCs now and then utilize the so-called peer assessment. In this, participants rate each other's works and by this allow group sizes far larger than traditional education formats. While neglecting face-to-face -face interaction, MOOC platforms provide an extraordinary amount of data about what is going on in the learning environment. Starting with information about the whereabout of the participants, all actions within the course are digital events on the platform and can potentially be used for providing feedback to the teachers. Forum and email provide a way for everyone to get through with his or her question. The forum analytics allow the course creators to see what people are doing with the material. Especially interesting is the statistical aggregation of how people interact with, say, a video. You can see if people stop viewing during minute two or jump back to the beginning. This eagle-eye view on what is going on allows you to identify difficulties. And this, in turn, allows you to improve your course. In this sense, for you, learning to analyze means learning to improve. One possibility to provide service to your students is download material. The Internet's not everywhere. By providing your course material in a to-go version, you widen the geographical range in which people can join. This probably even leads to a broader audience by making your course reach more into the non-digital world. Download material also allows further creative use. If you publish your course on a Creative Commons license like this one, people can use it to develop their own materials, mashups or whatever. So offering text, audio and video downloads expands the range and possibilities of your course. 
One key mechanism the platform provides for handling the course are different access rights. As a creator, you have author rights and are allowed to change nearly everything. The first non-authors to get in are usually beta users who help to smoothen the experience and pave the way to letting regular users into your course. They can as well be sneak peek users who get a glimpse of what is going on inside in the hope that they will become regular users. At the end of your course there can be a certificate. If you are not giving them away just for joining, the platform is again awfully important. For coupling the certificate with a certain qualification, you need to be able to tell who is entitled to receive this document. This kind of real world things usually costs money and so a payment option built into the platform could come handy at this point. After this quick walkthrough of what a platform can and should do, let's finish with the probably most important thing. As said in the beginning, the very heart of your course's digital home is being visible and findable.